How's it going guys? Uh, welcome to another episode of Elevated Minis. Um, today we're going to be painting up the Blissful One from the Unmade War Band for War Cry. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. First things first with this model is uh, we're just going to be priming it up in black. Uh, you can use any black primer you want. Um, I'm just using what I happen to have from my airbrush and that's what I'm going with. With the model all primed, the first color I'm kind of starting my Zenithal highlight with is Purple Shadow. Um, I really wanted to test myself with this model and try to use every paint from this paint set because I think it's a really cool paint set and it really lends itself to this model and I really haven't seen a whole lot of videos using this paint set so um, hopefully I can do it some justice and you like the result. So my next color with my Zenithal highlight is Malefic Flesh. I'm spraying at a 45 degree angle and uh, what this does is it keeps the shadows nice and purple and that's really what my whole goal with this model was, was to keep it in this like purple family. I don't know, I don't know if it's successful or not, um, let me know in the comments down below. Um, you know, this is a big experiment, there's lots of things I was just trying and uh, I was really happy with how it came out though. And for my final Zenithal highlight, I'm using Pale Flesh sprayed directly from above the model. And you can see how it really makes the top really pop out, and that's what you want. So moving away from the cardboard box, um, we're moving on with our paintbrush and starting with Purple Hex, which is part of the Imperial Purple paint set, uh, which is part of the same range as the Malefic Flesh paint set. So another eight paint uh, set. Uh, I really like it and again I haven't seen many videos on it and it's got some uh, cool ways to paint purple. Uh, there's the there's the, got the warm purples which kind of go into a pink which you'll see me do a little bit later on and also the cooler tones which is like a blue a blue tone and uh, yeah, I really like what this paint set can do so I hope you guys like it. And for this uh, skin skirt looking thing, um, <laughs> I'm using base flesh from the fairy flesh set. And uh, can, I thinned it down with a little glaze medium just to keep it nice and thin. And uh, just let those sh uh, shadows still come through, all the highlights. And uh, yeah, I'm really digging these paint sets. Uh, check them out. Um, I'll have links for them down in the description below. Um, they're affiliate links, so if you purchase them using those links, I get a small little percentage back from Amazon. And uh, yeah, it's just a small way to help support this channel. So it probably took oh, about two or three coats to cover nice. Um, I left the a little bit of a shadow around where the stitches are just to kind of help them pop out later. So that's why you kind of see me leaving a little dark darkness there. I think it really helps the stitching pop out later. And so far all the metallic bits and leather straps I'm using heavy charcoal. Uh, probably the trickiest part with this is your brush can sometimes get stuck in all those little spiky bits and can fling paint onto different surfaces on the model. So just be careful, take your time and you end up looking good. And speaking for the model itself, it's an awesome looking model. Uh, the biggest thing was when I was putting it together, um, the arms go underneath the uh, hood there. And if you put too much pressure on it, you can easily break off the arms where the metal meets the little cloth area there. Um, I used a little bit of the Tamiya 
uh, extra thin cement to try to reinforce it so it doesn't fall off. Uh, hopefully it doesn't, but I mean, that's something to keep in mind with this model. It's very delicate, so uh, just be careful. That's my best advice for you there. So I really wanted to uh, challenge myself on this model, like I was saying earlier. And uh, one thing I haven't really experimented a whole lot with is glazing. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to try it. So what I'm doing is I thin down my amethyst uh, with a four to one mix of medium to paint. And uh, it probably took about 20 layers or so to get the look I was going after. But the biggest thing is you want to make sure that the brush stroke ends on where you want the paint to be the brightest. So um, you take some time, a little patience, but you get a really seamless transition. But looking at this process at the end, I think it probably would have been easier to glaze um, with purple hex and just had the base coat be amethyst. It's just probably easier to glaze with a dark color as opposed to a lighter one. So keep that in mind. Uh, maybe try base coating it with amethyst. Um, that's probably what I would have done differently. So you live, you learn. Yeah, moving on to my next glaze, um, I used Witch Purple. And one thing I want to point out about this paint set is that the colors seem to really go on way brighter than what they actually dry down to. So if you think it looks a little weird, don't worry. It's all going to look good. Um, this probably took, you know, 20 layers, kind of similar to the last color to build up to the coverage that I wanted. Um, and eventually, I'm going to try to record myself mixing the paints on my palette so you can see what I'm doing better as far as consistency of the paint and whatnot. I'm still experimenting uh, with my recording setup to see what works best for the space I'm in, which honestly, uh, it's not very conducive for recording videos, but it's something I want to get better at. I'm highlighting this uh, skin skirt up with uh, natural flesh. I wanted to make this um, look kind of recently crafted, so I kind of went with these natural skin tones, which uh, you'll see in the next step, I kind of knock it back a bit. And it gives it a little more weathered appearance, but it, um, but that was my thought process going in with this one. Sorry about the light here; it kind of gets a little bright. Um, I have my, <laughs> I have a magnifying light here, and it's probably, well, yeah, it is a little bit too close, so it kind of overexposes the video a bit. So. You know, like I said, I'm trying to get better at the whole recording process, but I think you kind of get the idea. Like I was saying earlier, um, this is where I kind of knock back the uh, skin tone a bit, and I use uh, burned flesh, but I thin it down with some glaze medium, just like I did with the cloth. Um, I may have added a little bit extra water in there too, uh, but it makes it more like a wash, and it gives us this nice weathered look to it. And on to the metallics. I'm using gunmetal here. Um, probably the trickiest part about this is um, trying not to hit all the little spiky bits on the model to have it flick it onto like the cloth or anything. And for the belt buckle, I used a two to one mix of glorious gold and gunmetal. And I think that's, yeah, that, pretty sure that's the only spot I use this color. So, highlighting up the skull, I'm using pale flesh. And again, I'm sorry about the light. I will try to be better about not having that light too close while I'm trying to paint, but it was kind of a fine detail and I wanted to make sure I didn't screw up. One of the benefits of the airbrush is I kind of got this skull for free. Um, so all I really had to do was use pale flesh to highlight it up, similar to the skull on the front.
I wanted to give the straps a little bit of texture, so I just made kind of like a medium gray, but used heavy charcoal and pale flesh, and just kind of scratched along the surface with a fine brush. And it kind of gives it a little bit of a weathered appearance. That final highlight of pale flesh. I can see here I'm just doing it again and just doing more little scratches along the leather strap there. And with the stitches, I'm using highlight skin. And anytime you're doing fine details like this, just use the side of your brush and take your time, go slow, and you'll get a really nice looking stitch in this case. I wanted to make the skin pop out a little bit more, so I pulled out some more of the pale flesh and uh, just kind of hit the raised areas of the skin, and uh, yeah, it just makes the skin pop out nicely. And you can see that it's really, it goes on really bright here. It almost looks white, but uh, like I said earlier with these paints, is they do tend to go on way brighter than what the final result will end up looking like. So in my effort to keep this model in the purplish toned family, I mixed up some Nuln Oil and some Druchi Violet uh, 3-2 mix um, to wash over all the metallic parts. It just gives the metal just a little bit more interest and in tonal variety as opposed to just straight metal. And just using a little bit of Reichlin Flesh Shade to hit the belt buckle just to give it kind of a little more burnished look. And to make all the spiky bits look a bit more sharp, I'm using silver to just mostly just hit the, like I said, the little spiky bits on everything. It just kind of makes things look sharp and it could inflict some damage. And on the belt, I'm just using a one-to-one -one mix of the glorious gold and silver. Just hitting all the little spiky bits there. And it uh, just kind of makes the belt pop out just a little bit more. For the base, I have to admit that it was a bit of an experiment. It was a bit all over the place, and I'm not really 100% in love with it. Uh, but one thing with my channel is that I hope to show you guys my mistakes and happy accidents along the way. I'm learning just as much as the next guy, so I'm always open to constructive criticism and advice. I knew I wanted to try making a bloody stream cutting through the base, like this guy just killed someone in the stream and the blood completely tinted the water around him. It probably would have been uh, much better if I had used some random body parts, glued them in, and swirled a little bit of blood around them, but hey, maybe this is a lesson in not what not to do. But to simulate a bit of a riverbed, I used a ghrelin earth, which is a crackling texture paint, um, to simulate some cracks. And my thought process was I would use a dark wash to get in all of them and give some interest. But after all the stuff I ended up putting on top of it, it just kind of got lost throughout the process. And for the ground cover, I just used Sterling mud and I uh, used a sculpting tool to kind of push it around to where I wanted it to be. You don't have to worry so much about the colors of the... Uh, the texture paints here because we're just going to be painting over them anyway in a later step. If any of you guys have done this on one of your models, let me know in the comments down below or send me a picture or whatever. Um, I'd love to know how you did it and uh, maybe we can get better at this together. And here I am base coating the stone gate, at least I think it's stone. <laughs> it's not exactly clear, but uh, that's what I'm going with and uh, I use frozen flesh from the Malefic Flesh set and uh, you'll see me using 
the rest of the paints from that set in the base here. Um, I use the green one later on that you'll see. But uh, it's a lot of fun to set some parameters and challenges for yourself with each paint job because I think that's really how you learn best. And I was using some game color red ink here. I wasn't too happy with how this was looking. Uh, but, you know, it's all about the end result, so you can always just paint over it and keep painting over it until you get to the result you want. I'm dry brushing the stone gate with cold flesh um, with a makeup brush of all things, a little uh, trick I picked up from watching other YouTubers along the way. Um, if you don't have a wife that will let you steal from her makeup drawer, um, you can always get cheap brushes, So, uh, but they are great for dry brushing. I'm using Nocturna Shadow here for the ground cover. It's a nice deep foresty green color. And I think that just about uh, finishes my challenge to use every paint from this paint set. And I'm using the final color here, which is Forest Skin. Again, with that makeup brush from the wife's makeup drawer. <laughs> um, they're, they're great brushes for dry brush. I definitely recommend you guys try it. And for my final dry brush on this ground, I'm using a pale flesh, and it just brightens it up and gives you a little more variation. And now going in with some washes, I'm using Kerberg Crimson on the river, just to try to darken up the red and get in all the cracks. I also think I used Null Oil in the stream, but uh, I don't think I caught it on video for some reason, but uh, that's okay. Um, here over the ground cover I'm using Ethonian Camo Shade, and I also use uh, Seraphim Sepia. It's just, it's all for variation in tone to just to try to break everything up. And just hitting the rivets with some gun metal, a uh, real simple step. I'm just edge highlighting the stones here with pale flesh again. Just really kind of helps separate them from the uh, ground cover. Yeah, I think I forgot to mention that I painted the skull in the same color as the stone. So again, just using the pale flesh to highlight up the skull. Just real simple and easy. And one final uh, dry brush after all these uh, shades have dried. I'm using pale flesh again. It just kind of brightens it up a little bit Before going into the mess that is the next step which I used uh, Tamiya clear red Sanctuary red and chalice red. I couldn't tell you the mix. I can't even remember But I know I did not like this one bit once it came out so But I wanted to show you anyway that I tried to salvage it a little bit later on and here I'm using a little bit of purple hex. I was trying to uh, simulate a little depth here um, from the edges and the middle, but I don't, like, again, I, <laughs> I can tell I was kind of struggling with this. I just did not like how it was looking. Um, I ended up mixing, I think, a little bit of heavy charcoal in here as well. And uh, I just really wanted to show you the mess that was this step, but... Uh, I think it's kind of important to see sometimes. And after all that um, bloody uh, paint mixing that was going on, I decided to take a sponge and just kind of do some blood effects and uh, just kind of splatter it on the blades here, throw a little bit on the skirt, and uh, it's pretty convincing. So uh, at least I feel like this part looked pretty good. And here I was just kind of experimenting with red game ink to uh, just trying to make it look like blood had just recently splashed along the edge here. Um, I probably didn't need to do this step because the next step I cover it up anyway with the Tamiya Clear Red. I was just going all over the place with this, trying to get this to look the way I wanted to. So, but just showing you, you know, the trials of trying new things, and hope you guys like that. Yeah, but here we are using the Tamiya Clear Red again. And I just wanted to make it look glossy, but I didn't really like how the red looked here either. It was just something flat about it. I don't know. 
how else to describe it. And once that clear red dried, I had the idea to try to like wet blend these two washes together. I used Army Painter Red Tone and Dark Tone. And with the Dark Tone, I just kind of swirled it around in the middle just to kind of make it look like the stream was flowing a little bit. And I got it to a decent looking river of blood, I guess. So here you just see me using a little finer tip brush to try to have a little more swirling action going on. And I finally liked how it came out here. And for the water effects, I'm using Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. I picked this up from Miniac um, just to try this stuff out. And I really liked how it came out. It's a lot easier than mixing a two-part resin and worrying about it running all over the edge. So it's thick enough to where it'll just stay in place. Just don't squeeze too much and it won't get all over. And for my final touches after the... Dimensional Magic dried up. I'm using black just to rim the base and using some winter tufts from Army Painter and that will finish up this model. Uh, thanks again for taking the time to watch a video and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you could hit that like, subscribe, and bell button would be much appreciated. That will make sure you're always notified when I release a new video. All of my social and affiliate links will be down in the description below where you can always get in touch with me or see what I'm planning on doing next. And until next time, thanks again.